for the multi-phase um, users, there's now a new simpler um, boiling model. So in Fluent, as in CFX, you can use this full RPI boiling model where you include all the physics and full multi-phase calculations, but that's incredibly expensive and is more of a fundamental nature. If you're just wanting to include boiling in, for example, um, a cooling jacket, some sort of cooling system, um, then you can do it with a much simpler model now which um, allows you to um, set up a region you want boiling to occur. You can see here that it's been well validated. And what the um, output will give you also is you can now look and see um, how much enhancement over single phase flow the boiling is giving you in what regions. So you can see where this model is active. Other multi-phase improvements, there's a new VOF checkbox. So that gives you details of your setup and gives you recommendations here of things that would uh, possibly improve your simulation. So again, moves to make things easier to do. There's a new coalescence model, the Prince and Blanche model that was in CFX is now available in, in Fluent and, and can be useful in, in bubbly flows. It's also possible to now set an aggregation and breakup factor in front of these collision um, kernels so that you can tune the models. I think anybody who's used them knows that when you're using population balance approaches, there are no definitive models yet. And so often you have to tweak them and this makes it much easier to do. Um, not on this slide, but for those of you who are multi-phase users, if you switch on beta features, there's a new um, series of panels for multi-phase setup, which are simplified and um, give you a nice tabbing environment to work in. Something that I've now taken to doing all the time. I think it's a really nice improvement and, and that'll be released fully at the, at the next release. For those using particles, something that's been um, long awaited that when you look at radiation balances now, the radiation heat transfer contribution from the particles will be included. So you'll now be able to really check those balances properly. Um, you can have um, a Leiden frost temperature at the wall now. So when, when you've got the particles falling a film, um, you can have that film disappear at a Leiden frost temperature. You can also now get clearer reporting of how much mass of particles is in the fluid domain and how much is in the film domain. For radiation, particularly for the Monte Carlo uh, model, where you've got um, a photon-based uh, radiation model, you've always been able to do collimated beams, but now you can do things like LEDs, which have a particular profile of admission. And the nice thing is that that profile is based on the polar angle around there, and you can use expressions. So um, here's a case straight away where the new expression options are going to make life easy. If you've got data on your particular emission um, distribution, you can straight away build it into your radiation model. For those using the battery model, um, when you want to calculate the, the um, heat input and you've got a circuit, you can now use a simple circuit model to do that and, and map that heat input back. So it's going to be a big uh, cost saver computationally. The electrochemical reaction model um, can now be applied in multi-phase. So very typically, um, you've got reactions like electro electrolysis. So you're producing gas bubbles. Um, previously, you couldn't then include ionic reactions. Well, now you can. So this is, this is a big extension of that model. Um, for soot modeling, um, there's been soot models in Fluent forever. Um, they're much more empirical. Um, people have developed really detailed surface mechanisms, etc., for soot formation. You can now actually read these into Fluent and make use of them. There are some limitations. Um, you can only use it with a finite rate chemistry at the moment, um, but um, this gives you a lot more flexibility and is the direction that ANSYS is moving for dealing with this particular pollutant. 
And a nice example here, you've got an ethylene flame with an equivalence ratio of two, so there's a lot of soot being produced. Um, experimental data, this is the new model in green. The previous model gave you some massive overestimate, um, but you could actually tune a factor so it doesn't look too bad, but then you change the height of this channel, the new model stays about the same, the previous model untuned model was better, but the tuned one is now badly off. So there's really no predictive capability in the previous model. This is so much better. When you're doing um, combustion reactions, we all know that at low temperatures, nothing happens, but previously we'd still have to calculate the kinetics, et cetera, in these um, cells where nothing was happening. You can now include a temperature threshold so that if the temperature is below a certain threshold, maybe you choose 700 K, then you'll find that um, it does not calculate the, the kinetics in there. And that's going to save a lot of time, particularly with a big mechanism. So for an example here, you're getting like a 20% speed up, which is definitely worth having. Much work has been done on the adjoint solver to improve the numerics, et cetera. But I want to concentrate here on just a quick application, in particular, the way you can use objective functions has changed. So um, previously, we can have this single objective function. So here, the objective is to enhance the ratio of the heat transfer rate and the pressure divided by the pressure drop. So you want maximum heat transfer, minimum pressure drop. And you, this is rather an arbitrary ratio that's often used, um, but it's one way of driving this design in the right direction. And you can see here as this organic change in design, maybe not so good for manufacturing, um, but this is just an example to show you what's going on. Now, the new feature here is that you can have two different um, objectives. So you want to be able to increase the heat transfer rate out of here, but you also want to minimize the pressure drop. And so you can do those um, as two objectives, and you can see here the, the rise in the heat transfer rate, the fall in the pressure drop, and again, some complex shape change here. Um, if you build a ROM, so, um, you can produce re reduced order models now with Influent, and those reduced order models allow you to input parameters within the range and quickly get results. Um, you can now read those into Workbench. Um, you can use a, a ROM reader in Workbench and then use them to both calculate and plot the, the behavior of your ROM. There's been a few post-processing enhancements and reporting. I guess a key one of those is that um, you can now replot monitors, et cetera, when you read a case and data file in and, and build up the history there. Um, also, the remote uh, client supports particle track display. So for anybody using the, um, the DPM models, um, that's a really important improvement.